William Philip Phil Graham is an American economist and politician, who has served as a Democratic congressman, a Republican congressman and a Republican senator from Texas. He later became a lobbyist for UBS and founded a public policy and lobbying firm, Graham Partners. He was a senior economic advisor to John McCain's presidential campaign from the summer of 2007 until July 18, 2008. Early life and university career. Graham was born on July 8, 1942 in Fort Benning, Georgia, and grew up in nearby Columbus. Soon after his birth, Graham's father Kenneth suffered a stroke and was partially paralyzed. He died when Graham was 14. Graham's mother, Florence, worked double shifts as a nurse to supplement the veteran's disability pension. Graham attended public schools, graduated 1961 from Georgia Military Academy, and graduated 1964 from the University of Georgia. He received a doctorate in economics from the University of Georgia's Terry College of Business in 1967. He then taught economics at Texas A&M University from 1967 to 1978. In addition to teaching, Graham founded the economic consulting firm Graham and Associates, United States House of Representatives. In 1976, Graham unsuccessfully challenged Texas Democratic Senator Lloyd M. Benson in the party's senatorial primary. Then in 1978, Graham successfully ran as a Democrat for representative from Texas's 6th Congressional District, which stretched from the Fort Worth suburbs to College Station. He was re-elected to his House seat as a Democrat in 1980. Graham's voting record was very conservative, even by Texas Democratic standards of the time. During his first four terms, he tallied an average rating of 89 from the American Conservative Union, and from 1980 to 1982 he garnered the highest rating from that body of any Democrat in the Texas delegation. In 1981, he co-sponsored the graham latter budget which implemented President Ronald Reagan's economic program, increased military spending cut of spending, and mandated the Economic Recovery Tax Act of 1981. Just days after being re-elected in 1982, Graham was thrown off the House Budget Committee. In response, Graham resigned his House seat on January 5, 1983. He then ran as a Republican for his own vacancy in a special election held on February 12, 1983, and won rather handily. One of his many special election opponents was the second-place finisher by only 115 votes in his 1978 Democratic Party primary, the then newly elected state senator Chet Edwards of Waco, and later U.S. representative for the 11th and the 17th congressional districts of Texas. Another special election opponent was Texas State Representative Dan Kubiak of Rockdale, Texas. Graham became the first Republican to represent the district since its creation in 1846. After he left the House the seat was retained for the Republican Party by Joe Barton, United States Senate. In 1984, Graham was elected as a Republican to represent Texas in the U.S. Senate. He defeated Congressman Ron Paul, former gubernatorial nominee Henry Grover, Robert Moss Barker, Jr., of Houston, and several of other contenders in the primary. He then faced the Democratic nominee, State Senator Lloyd Doggett of Austin in the general election for the right to succeed retiring Republican Senator John G. Tower. Graham polled 3,116,348 votes to Doggett's 2,207,557. Graham was the first U.S. Senate candidate in the history of Texas to receive more than 3 million votes. Graham served on the Senate Budget Committee from 1989 until leaving office in 2003. Graham and Senators Fritz Hollings and Warren Rudman devised a means of cutting the budget through across-the-board spending cuts if deficit reduction targets were not met. 
They were successful in making the Graham Rudman Hollings Act law, although portions were ruled unconstitutional. In the years following the passage of the Act, other sections were largely superseded by other budget controlling mechanisms. In 1990, Graham failed in an effort to amend the Iraq International Law Compliance Act of 1990. An earlier amendment to the Act, the D'Amato Amendment, prohibited the U.S. from selling arms or extending any sort of financial assistance to Iraq unless the president could prove Iraq was in substantial compliance with the provisions of a number of human rights conventions, including the Genocide Convention. After reading the D'Amato Amendment, Graham introduced his own amendment to counter the human rights sanctions in the D'Amato Amendment. Graham's amendment would have allowed the Bush administration to waive the terms of the D'Amato Amendment if it found that sanctions against Iraq hurt U.S. businesses and farms more than they hurt Iraq. In the end, the bill passed the Senate without Graham's amendment only a week before Saddam and Hussein invaded Kuwait. Graham won his second Senate term in 1990 with a victory over Democratic State Senator and former Fort Worth Mayor Hugh Palmer. Graham polled 3,027,680 votes to Palmer's 1,429,986, again receiving more than 3 million votes. Between 1999 and 2001, Graham was the chairman of the U.S. Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs. During that time he spearheaded efforts to pass banking deregulation laws, including the landmark graham leach Blilly Act in 1999, which removed Depression-era laws separating banking, insurance and brokerage activities. As a senator, Graham often called for reductions in taxes and fraud in government spending. He employed his Dickey Flat test to determine if federal programs were worthwhile. Richard Dickey Flat owns a family-run printing business started by his father and mother in Mexia, Texas, and is a longtime Graham supporter. In Graham's eyes, Flat embodied the burdens that a typical Texas independent small businessman faced in the realm of taxation and government spending. In spite of his self-proclaimed opposition to federal spending, Graham voted to have the federal government build a superconducting supercollider in his state, which would have cost billions of dollars of taxpayer money. Graham ran unsuccessfully for the Republican Party nomination in the 1996 presidential election, for which he had raised $8 million as early as July 1994. Although he began the race with a full war chest and tied for first place with Dole in the 1995 Iowa straw poll, his campaign was fatally wounded when in an upset he lost the Louisiana caucus on February 7, 1996 to Pat Buchanan. New Orleans Times-Picayune political columnist Otis Pike noted the loss could be traced to the passion of the supporters for Buchanan compared to those for Graham. Graham should have won the Louisiana caucuses, but didn't because the religious right turned out to vote in larger numbers. This poor showing in a state adjacent to Texas plus placing fifth in Iowa's caucuses, resulted in Graham's withdrawal from the contest on the Sunday before the New Hampshire primary. He threw his support to senatorial colleague Robert J. Dole of Kansas. Graham, a proponent of free trade, also lashed out at Buchanan, arguing that Buchanan was a protectionist. After abandoning his presidential bid, Graham refocused on his bid for a third Senate term. He defeated Victor Morales of Dallas in November 1996 to win what would be his final term in the Senate. Graham was one of five co-sponsors of the Commodity Futures Modernization Act of 2000. One provision of the bill is often referred to as the Enron loophole, because some critics blame the provision for permitting the Enron scandal to occur. In 2002, Graham left his Senate seat a few weeks before the expiration of his term in hopes that his successor, fellow Republican John Cornyn, could gain seniority over other newly elected senators. However, Cornyn did not gain additional seniority due to a 1980 Rules Committee policy. 
2007 mortgage and 2008 financial and economic crises. Some economists state that the 1999 legislation spearheaded by Graham and signed into law by President Clinton, the Graham-Leach-Blilly Act, was significantly to blame for the 2007 subprime mortgage crisis and 2008 global economic crisis. The Act is most widely known for repealing portions of the Glass-Steagall Act, which had regulated the financial services industry. The Act passed the House and Senate by an overwhelming majority on November 4, 1999. Graham responded in March 2008 to criticism of the Act by stating that he saw no evidence whatsoever that the subprime mortgage crisis was caused, in any way, by allowing banks and securities companies and insurance companies to compete against each other. Graham's support was later critical in the passage of the Commodity Futures Modernization Act of 2000, which kept derivatives transactions, including those involving credit default swaps, free of government regulation. In its 2008 coverage of the financial crisis, the Washington Post named Graham one of seven key players in the battle over regulating derivatives for having pushed through several major bills to deregulate the banking and investment industries, including the 1999 graham leach blilly Act that brought down the wall separating the commercial banking, investment and insurance industries. 2008 Nobel laureate in economics Paul Krugman, a supporter of Barack Obama and former President Bill Clinton, described Graham during the 2008 presidential race as the high priest of deregulation and has listed him as the number two person responsible for the economic crisis of 2008 behind only Alan Greenspan. On October 14, 2008, CNN ranked Graham number seven in its list of the ten individuals most responsible for the current economic crisis. In January 2009 Guardian City editor Julia Finch identified Graham as one of 25 people who were at the heart of the financial meltdown. Time included Graham in its list of the top 25 people to blame for the economic crisis. John McCain 2008 Presidential Campaign Graham was co-chair of John McCain's presidential campaign and his most senior economic advisor from the summer of 2007 until July 18, 2008. In a July 9, 2008 interview on McCain's economic plans, Graham explained the nation was not in a recession, stating, You've heard of mental depression, this is a mental recession, he added, We have sort of become a nation of whiners. You just hear this constant whining, complaining about a loss of competitiveness. America in decline, Graham's comments immediately became a campaign issue. McCain's opponent, Senator Barack Obama, stated, America already has one drive, Phil. We don't need another one when it comes to the economy. This economic downturn is not in your head, McCain strongly denounced Graham's comments. On July 18, 2008, Graham stepped down from his position with the McCain campaign, explaining his remarks. Graham stated that he had used the word whiners to describe the nation's politicians rather than the public, stating, the whiners are the leaders. In the same interview, Graham said, I'm not going to retract any of it. Every word I said was true, current employment. As of 2009, Graham is employed by UBSAG as a vice chairman of the investment bank division. UBS.com states that a vice chairman of a UBS division is appointed to support the business in their relationships with key clients. He joined UBS in 2002 immediately after retiring from the Senate. Personal. Graham lives in Helitess, outside San Antonio, Texas. He is married to Dr. Wendy Lee Graham, a native of Hawaii, who is associated with George Mason University's Mercatus Center in Virginia. They are the parents of two sons. Marshall Graham, a professor of economics at Rhodes College in Memphis, Tennessee, and Jeff Graham, who has played in the indie pop band Aiden. In 1999, after a bonfire stack collapse at Texas A&M University that resulted in 12 deaths, 
Then Senator Phil Graham offered the F-16 flyover reserved for his future funeral as a U.S. senator to be given instead to the Texas A&M community. The offer was accepted and a memorial flyover for the 12 killed was flown at a Texas A&M football game on November 26, 1999. Works. Graham, William P. Laissez-faire and the optimum quantity of money. Economic Inquiry 12, 125-132, DOI, 10.1111-J.1465-7295.1971-1, TBOO, 232, X.